Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Football Podcast. This episode is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. And as always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. All right, it is now day... What day is it? I always forget. I know I do this every single podcast. Let's see. 7, 14, 21, 35, 42, 49. Let's see. 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. Day 54. I could be wrong, all right? I said I'm not good at math. Don't blame me for it. But I believe it's now day 54 without football. I just should just te- check um, Tuesday's podcast to see. But, you know, that'd be too much work. But anyway, I believe it's day 54 without football. I hope so. If not, I'm completely wrong. But either way, here we are. We're getting through it. It's the off season. It is what it is, all right? So now we're going to be talking about pro days. We're going to be talking about a whole bunch of stuff. Since no trade, actually there has been a trade that's went down. Jason Pierre-Paul now plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right. So that's one thing we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about the rookies. All right. The theme has pretty much been so far this offseason about the quarterbacks, and it's going to continue to be about them. All right. Because that's the biggest story of the draft. Where are all these quarterbacks going? Who knows? So we're going to talk about Sam Darnold's pro day. Josh Rosen, I believe, is having his uh, had a throwing session with the Jets in the rain too. Oh yeah, it's one thing too with Sam Darnold. He had his throwing his pro day in the rain. So obviously, if Sam Darnold's got to do it, Josh Rosen has to do it. So we're going to be talking about all that. Let's see what else we got going on. There's a bunch of trades this offseason, obviously with the Jason Pierre-Paul one. So we're going to spend one segment talking about Jason Pierre-Paul and his and the trade and him and him getting traded to the Bucks and then later on in the third segment we'll be talking about my favorite trades so far this offseason all right so we'll be doing that let's see what else we got going on for the fourth segment pretty much whatever else crosses my mind as far as the game of football goes all right could be anything who knows usually it's pretty fun to talk about but that's what we're going to be doing okay so, that's how the show's going to go on. Let's get into it. So, Jason Pierre-Paul, now a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, was traded to the Bucks for a third-round pick and a fourth-round pick, I believe. Nice little haul for him, all right? He's got like four years, signed a four-year, $64 million deal last year with the Giants, all right? Turns out, hey, we don't want to pay this guy all that money, so they chose not to and traded him. All right, and this is a move I like for the Bucks. This is also a move I like for the Giants, all right? And let me tell you why. All right, so for the Bucks, no secret, had the worst defense of the NFC, I believe. All right, not the worst defense in the NFL. That goes to your Oakland Raiders. But either way, Bucks had a terrible defense. And with Jason Pierre-Paul coming there, now you get a guy to pair with Gerald McCoy. And yes, I know Gerald McCoy plays on the interior side of the defensive line. All right, but either way, putting a guy like Jason Pierre-Paul out there, is going to be a big help to that Buccaneers defense, all right? You always need to pressure the quarterback. You already got good linebackers out there. Now with a better defensive line, you're going to make those linebackers play a whole lot better. What they still need to fix up is that secondary, all right? I think they brought back Brent Grimes for one more year. I guess he was their best corner last year, but I mean, I don't know. You still need to fix it up, all right? It's not going to fix everything there. So yeah, you still got to fix up the secondary. And as for the Giants, I mean, you get two draft picks, third and fourth rounds. Those are pretty high value right there. And now it's like, are they going to be taking Bradley Chubb with the second pick in the draft? All right. And I can see them going that route because of the fact that, yeah, you signed JPP to a four-year, $64 million deal last year. You trade him. Now you can draft a defensive end who probably is the best best defensive lineman in all the draft. All right. Maybe he could give you the same production that JPP did, but for cheaper. All right. And I saw Lewis Riddick from ESPN. He said that Bradley Chubb is a better prospect than Miles Garrett. Is that where we're at this offseason? Is that where we've come to? Are we just throwing around hot takes, hoping it lands and hoping it sticks on the wall? Is that what we're doing? Because I got a whole bunch of hot, take, hot takes I'm ready for. All right? I could throw out the Brady's assistant quarterback, all that stuff if we want. I'm not going to do it, obviously, because I don't think it's true. But nonetheless, I mean, come on. 
Really? Is this what we're doing, Lewis Riddick? Lewis Riddick usually has some pretty good opinions, but I mean, Bradley Chubb being a better prospect than Miles Garrett is just as bad as that one time, I think it was like Chris Haynes for ESPN wrote an article saying that LeBron James could possibly take a meeting, possibly with the Golden State Warriors, and the Warriors, by the way, don't have any cap space to bring him in, so they have to trade like Draymond Green and Klay Thompson in order for it to even happen, all right? Classic old ESPN, just throwing stuff out there, just trying to create stories where there's no stories to be made. All right, so yeah, they did that. But either way, though, Bradley Chubb is going to be a nice little defensive end for whatever team he plays for. All right, the Giants, I mean, that could be them. I think the Giants, honestly, are making a mistake by um, not drafting a quarterback with the number two pick, okay? Let me tell you why. So you got Eli Manning, good quarterback, great quarterback, Hall of Fame, first ballot, no doubt. There's no arguing it, all right? If you don't think Eli Manning is a first ballot Hall of Famer, then what would you say? Who, where, if Eli Manning's not first ballot, what would you say about a guy who is top six in touchdowns, top seven in yards? All right, two Super Bowls. I mean, wouldn't you say that's a first ballot Hall of Famer? Because that's Eli Manning there. All right, I understand. Eli Manning is the Dwight Howard of the NFL. All right, Dwight Howard, first ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt. All right, I know this is a football show, but we like to cross over sometimes. Yeah, Dwight Howard, first ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt. That's what Eli Manning is, all right? But people hate Dwight Howard. People hate Eli Manning for, I don't even know why. People with Eli Manning like to say, oh, he only had two good years. You don't have only, like, two good years doesn't put you in the top seven for both passing touchdowns and passing yards all time. That's not how it works. Usually to do that, you got to be good for most of your career, which he's been, all right? Is Eli Manning, Eli Manning's got what, more Super Bowls than, no, he let, did Peyton ever win a Super Bowl with the Colts? He had to have, right? Yeah, he beat the Bears. So Peyton's got two Super Bowls. Imagine if Eli Manning won another Super Bowl. You think people would say, oh, is Eli Manning better than Peyton Manning? Like, let's just say Eli Manning tears it up this year and they go out, win the Super Bowl. All right? Honestly, is that a conversation that could be had? Is Eli Manning better than Peyton Manning? Peyton Manning, for me, is a top three quarterback all time, if not the best all time. All right? For me, it goes Brady, not in any order, Brady, Marino, Manning, okay? Aaron Rodgers wins the Super Bowl two more. Aaron Rodgers is the number one quarterback of all time. Aaron Rodgers is by far the most quarterback, um, talented quarterback of all time, all right? And maybe that's what we're going to be doing for the fourth segment, just talking quarterbacks, all right? Quarterbacks are the best to talk about. They're always fun. But either way, like I said, with the Giants, I mean, getting back to the original point, them not taking a quarterback, I feel, could go back and bite them in the behind, because the fact that Eli Manning's got about two years left on his deal, okay? And I think the Giants still draft a quarterback either way, but I think that you got to draft one top two, because like I said, Eli Manning's only got two more years left on his deal. Kind of looked like he took the step back last year, but then he had that 430-yard game when he came back from being benched, which was, I mean, come on, Bob McAdoo. Ben McAdoo, is it Bob McAdoo or Ben McAdoo? Either way, McAdoo. Benched Eli, comes back, throws for 430 yards, something like that, and I mean, that pretty much kept everyone quiet for a while and last year Eli Manning did struggle struggle but let's not forget the fact that he was without Brandon Marshall um OBJ was out Dwayne Harris and obviously Dwayne Harris isn't a top receiver or anything like that but he had four receivers out at one point all right so obviously when you get your top two out you're gonna need anyone else that's back there to come out and play though even those guys were hurt so that's one of the biggest reasons why I think Eli was um struggling so much last year and it looks like they're trying to rebuild the defense a little bit. Brought in Alec Ogletree. Now they traded away GPP. Like you have to be trading for Bradley Chubb, or, um, drafting Bradley Chubb, right? That has to be the idea here. All right, get rid of a, an expensive D end, bring in a cheaper D end. That's how football works, isn't it? I don't know. I think it is. But either way, I mean, Giants should be a pretty good team this year. I think. All right, I'm not sure if they're better for Dallas. They're not better than Philly. And um, it's going to be tough for the Giants this year. They, like, the NFC is probably the most unpredictable conference. Probably more unpredictable than it's ever been, honestly. You have about two teams who are going to, like, you know for sure aren't going to be competing. Who I guess, aren't going to be really, like, truly in that run for the wild card or the division, which is the Bears and the Redskins. But, like I say, the, Red, the Bears are going to be a 7-9-1 team. I'm not, I completely believe that. All right, but like with the Giants and stuff, I mean, you got Dallas who played extremely well with Zeke in the lineup last year when he was out. Obviously, didn't look good. Dak Prescott looked like a poor man's Alex Smith out there. Poor man's Alex Smith, meaning like he looked like Alex Smith, like worse than Alex Smith when Alex Smith was with the 49ers. All right, and that was a pretty bad version of Alex Smith. So yeah, Dak Prescott looked like a poor man's 49ers version of Alex Smith with Zeke Elliott not in there. All right, and again, it could have just been one of those because he was in his second year. Usually, rookie or second year players don't do well in that second year because there's tape. So now we got to see how Doc does back in his third year. But either way, I mean, 
you had guys like Jared Goff and Carson Wentz playing well in their second year. So I don't know. I don't know. But either way, I mean, you got that. You got to worry about that. Then you got all the other teams in the NFC. You got teams like the 49ers who are stepping up. You got teams like the Seahawks who are still around. All right. You got the three teams in the NFC North who could very well make the playoffs. All right. The NFC South. Speaking of the NFC South, we got the Bucks, the Saints, and the Panthers and Cardinals. Or no, the Panthers and uh, Falcons. Excuse me. All right. I mean, the Bucks, as far as they go, it's going to be tough for them to make the playoffs. And this year is going to be real tough for Dirk Cutter. He doesn't make playoffs and they don't play well. I don't think he comes back this season, after this season. All right? And Jason Pierre-Paul is not going to put your team over the top and get you into playoff contention. That is Jameis Winston's job. That's what Jameis Winston is going to do if he plays well. And pretty much the season rides on if Jameis Winston could take that next step, next step from being a good quarterback to a great quarterback. Jameis Winston has all the tools in the world to become a great quarterback, a top quarterback in this league. But his biggest problem is that the guy cannot make good decisions. And I'm not talking about the field, all right, because that's all past. That's all college stuff. Jameis Winston has passed all that, I believe. I'm talking about the, shit, the um, bad decisions on the football field, all right? Not taking the sack. And deciding to throw the ball up in there, hoping something happens, rather than taking the sack and nothing happening. You're just losing a few yards. All right? I always point back to that play this season, this past season, where they're in the red zone. Jameis Winston is pretty much leaning sideways because he's about to go down. Throws the ball up into the end zone. It gets picked off. And sure enough, he's lucky enough to the point where there was a flag thrown on the play. And I can't remember who it was, who it was against. But either way, um, the interception didn't go through, obviously, because of the penalty on the defense. All right? And that's... Those are those are plays right there that get your coach fired. All right? Those are plays that hurt the season. Jameis Winston isn't going anywhere. Okay? Not anywhere. He's the future. They're going to stick with him for the near like forever. Jameis Winston has played well enough to the point where he's going to get an extension once he's up for one. All right? I think he's going to be going into his what? Fourth year this season? Yeah, his fourth year. That's crazy. Jameis Winston's already been in the, in the league for three years. Feels like those Florida State years um, when he won the national title and all that. Feels like it was a long time ago. But either way, Jameis got to play well this year. Got to take the next step. Got to stop making bad decisions. Got to stop making mistakes on the football field. All right, got to sharpen it up. Got to help his coach out. All right, like I said, I mean, they're not getting rid of Jameis Winston. Coach is going to be the first to go. That's how it's always been. All right, so either way, I like the trade, though. I think... Um, JPP helps out the Bucks. Those picks help out the Giants. All right, now it's just a matter of are they taking a quarterback, um, Saquon Barkley, or are they taking Bradley Chubb? All right, and I think with Sam Darnold's pro day, which we're actually we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in the next segment. All right, so that's actually gonna wrap it up for this segment. Next up, we're gonna be talking about Sam Darnold, Josh Rose, and all the quarterbacks. More so Sam Darnold than anything. So we'll be doing that. Like I said, we'll be talking about my favorite trades of the offseason so far in the third segment, and then for the fourth segment, as we always do, gonna be talking about whatever else is going on in the world of football. It doesn't really matter. We could talk more about the Alliance of American Football. They really gonna change that name because that is that's way too long. All right, who knows? We'll talk about anything else. But that's gonna wrap it up for this segment. Next up. We'll be talking about Sam Darnold, like I said, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. the GSMC football podcast in that first segment we basically just spent it talking about the Giants and Bucks a bit all right J- Jason Pierre uh, Jason Pierre Paul is now a Tampa Bay Buccaneer third and fourth round picks are now New York Giants all right that's kind of funny to say too I mean I like in the NBA when players get traded for cash considerations or whatever the Photoshop uh, cash considerations on the back of someone's jersey or whatever 
pretty funny to me. All right, guys. All right. So that's what we talked about in the first segment. This segment, what are we talking about? We're talking about rookie quarterbacks. We're talking about rookies to begin with. Probably top 10 rookies, top 10 draft picks. All right. What do we got going on here? All right. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Let's talk about Sam Darnold. All right. Let's talk about how he had his pro day yesterday at USC and how he threw in the rain. All right. Because there was this whole thing with Sam Darnold. Okay, yeah, he's a great quarterback. Yeah, he has a great arm. Yeah, he's... Uh, no, he's not that accurate. They haven't been saying that. Dude had like, what, 17, 22 interceptions or something like that. 22 turnovers, I think it is. He's got a strong arm. He's got all the tools. But what's what's the but? Uh, he can't play in bad weather. Are you serious? Is, is, is that what we're doing here? Sam Darnold can't play in bad weather? And again, that's been said about Sam Darnold. That's been like the one of the knocks on him. He hasn't played in bad... Like, can he play in bad weather? Sometimes I feel NFL scouts, you guys like Mel Kuyper, and again, Mel Kuyper's not NFL scouts, I'm doing NFL scouts, comma, Mel Kuyper, those guys of the world, all right, they try way too hard, all right, they try to think way too hard. Go with the sure thing, don't overthink it, all right, I mean, don't be saying, oh, but he, can he play in minus, um, and he can play, could he play in 30 degree less weather, could he play in a dome? Could he play when it's raining and then it becomes humid after? Could he play in Miami? All right. Could he play in the snow? Could he play in the heat? Like, why are we doing that? Why are we asking these dumb questions? Like, the whole, can the guy throw in bad weather? Are you serious? All right. I get that people are jealous of California because we have the greatest weather and all that. But let me tell you something. It's not all 70s and sunshine every day, every week. Believe it or not, we do get rain. Believe it or not, some some parts in California, it actually snows. That's crazy. I know. And LA, obviously it doesn't, but it does rain. All right? And I'm sure Sam Darnold before in his career has played in the rain. Oh, but it's not like the Chicago Bears uh, weather where it's windy and it's all kinds of stuff. It's snowing. Yeah, probably not. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter. If the dude could play quarterback, he could play quarterback, whether it's here, Antarctica, Jamaica, Canada, um, England, it doesn't matter. He can play quarterback wherever he wants, whatever type of weather. All right, it does not matter. So the whole can he play in bad weather is just a ridiculous question. All right, there's just so many things. Like with Josh Rosen, you got the whole um, pretty much, oh, yeah, he's NFL ready, but he pretty much has a mind of his own. All right, and Josh Rosen isn't a robot. As, we, as we've seen, Josh Rosen isn't afraid to speak his mind and give his thoughts. For some reason, NFL teams don't like it, and for some reason, I don't know why, but the NFL is so behind as far as moving forward. All right, the NBA lets their players speak out, lets their players give their thoughts. NBA is thriving right now, all right? Thriving. NBA is at its peak right now. It has never been bigger than what it is, all right, with all the social media and all that. The NBA encourages it, all right? But for some reason, the NFL wants you to be quiet, all right? I don't think I know why, but either way, the NFL wants you to be quiet and... They want you to pretty much line up, go play football, go home. All right? And I get that. But uh, I don't know. That's one of the knocks on Josh Rosen there. Dude has a mind of his own. He's not a puppet. Uh, I'm not mad at that. All right? Josh Rosen can speak up. Josh Rosen can say whatever he want. Doesn't matter to me. But of course, you can't have guys speaking up because of the fact that mm, you need them to be robots. But either way, getting back to the point, Sam Darnold had his pro bowl, or pro day yesterday at USC in the rain, and I guess he looked very good. I right, was making all the throws, didn't really miss anything. The only incompletions he really had was players dropping the ball because of the rain. All right, so there's that. Josh, Sam Darnold played well. And Sam Darnold, I don't know. I'm kind of flip-flopping here, okay? For sure, it's my top two quarterbacks are Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen. Not in any order that I just named him right there, Sam Darnold being one. But I kind of do want to go with Sam Darnold being my number one quarterback. I kind of... I don't know. I, I watched some of the throws from his pro day, and again, it's just the guy throwing in shorts. But uh, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't change my mind because the dude throwing in shorts. But he didn't throw in the rain. He did. That means something. Throwing in the rain. All right. And I get. I'll never question like, can he play in bad weather? That'd never be a reason why I didn't pick a player. But throwing in the rain, and I, like at least being as accurate as he was in the rain. Okay. Obviously, quarterbacks can throw in the rain, but you got to be. Accurate, leading your receivers, throwing them open. He was doing all that stuff, all right? Throwing in the rain, yeah, you can make the completions, but it's a matter of can you still throw them open? Can you lead them? He was doing that. So that's one thing I could pick out from him throwing in the rain, I guess you could say. And I mean, Sam Darnold is like, I don't know. Now people are talking like there's no way he goes past number one. All right, he's kind of like, now I think yesterday's pro day kind of solidified him as the number one pick in the draft. All right. And 
Sam Darnold's one of the few to be the potential number one pick the year before, stay in school, and still be the um, the potential number one pick. All right, because remember, like, my, um, jo- um, what's his name? Josh Locker, John Locker, Jake Locker. Jake Locker, I think his name was. All right, the quarterback for Washington. That one year, he was projected to be the number one pick, decided to stay in school. Next year, he goes, like, what, mid-20s, I think I think it was. Then reti- retires by 27. If he would have came out the year before, that dude would have been so rich. All right, because I think that's before they had the rookie uh, rookie cap. That's when you could give a rookie whatever you wanted. That guy would have made so much money. That's probably going to be his biggest regret in life, not coming out the year he probably should have. All right? What other quarterbacks have done that before? I want to think like Matt Lyon. No, Matt Lyon wasn't one. Matt Lyon was a weird quarterback. All right? Let's see. I think I was talking about quarterbacks on the GSMC Sports Podcast. I said we were talking on Tuesday. But either way, Matt Lyon is one of those quarterbacks where I think I was talking about quarterbacks who need to develop. All right, I think I was talking about it yesterday on the GSMC Sports Podcast. All right, quarterbacks who need to develop. Just bringing and talking about Case Keenum, talking about he's been in the league for a while, and maybe he's just finally becoming good because he finally had enough time to develop. One of the, one of the late bloomers. I kind of feel like Matt Leiner was going to be that, a late bloomer. All right, Matt Leiner, I mean, watching him in college was just ridiculous. Him and Reggie Bush, probably one of the best teams I've ever gotten to watch. All right, the first true memory I have of college football, I think, is um, that – Game between USC and Texas. All right. And you already know what game I'm talking about. It's the Vince Young National Championship game. Vince Young scored the game winning touchdown with like 40 seconds left or something like that. And uh, that's one of the all time great games there. It's probably the greatest game ever played in college football. And don't tell me about no games in the 70s, 80s, or 90s. Those games don't matter to me. All right. USC, Texas, by far, best game that ever was ever played. Can't tell me different. Yes, I'm just a millennial. What do I know? But it's true. But either way, getting back to it, I mean, Matt Leiner was like one of those guys who was a late bloomer, I think, but just injuries took over, hit him hard, all right? But like I said, I mean, getting back to the point, Sam Darnold, one of those guys, few guys where you could go, project to be a number one pick, stay in school still, and still become a number one pick. I think Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck could have came out early one year, but decided to stay in school, was the project to be a number one pick even that year, stays in school, and still project to be number one pick. And Andrew Luck, man, we need Andrew Luck back. Andrew Luck is a top five quarterback without a doubt when he's out there. All right, let's not forget he got the Colts to the AFC Championship game. All right, they got blown out because they didn't know how to stop the run for some reason. I mean, that was just garbage. I think it was like, what, the score was like 44-7 to or something like that? That was the deflate game game, the, the deflate gate game too. Deflate gate was such a sham too. I mean, wow, what a waste of money, time, and everything. I mean... They suspended Tom Brady for four years and the Patriots are for four games. And uh, that'd be wild if Tom Brady was suspended for four years. But yeah, Tom Brady gets suspended for four games and they still go out and win the Super Bowl. It can't be stopped. All right, but anyway, getting back to it. I mean, Sam Darnold, without a doubt, going to be the first quarterback off the board. And now it leaves it for like guys like Josh Rosen, Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield. Where are they ending up? And Josh Rosen, I mean, he had a workout. He has a workout with the Jets going on today. And um, that's actually going to be in the rain too. I don't know. Maybe Josh Rosen's trying to one up Sam Darnold. All right. But either way, I think if I had to make my picks, okay, and this is going to be tough. Again, this is my picks. I have no clue how it's going to end up, but I'm going to go, it goes Sam Darnold at number one to the Browns, Josh Rosen at number three to the Jets. All right. Josh Allen to the um, Broncos. And then I'd say Baker Mayfield to the Dolphins, unless the Brills trade up. Ahead of the Dolphins, and the, you got to feel you kind of have the feeling that Bills like they have to be trading up. There's no way that they don't trade up. If they don't trade up, then either they knew the whole time Lamar Jackson was going to be the quarterback they wanted, or that front office is just has no clue what they're doing. All right, so I mean, even then, so I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see Josh uh, Lamar Jackson in Miami if the Bills trade up. All right, Miami does need a backup quarterback. And I saw that they were meeting with Brock Osweiler, and I, that'd just be the ultimate Miami move, all right? Because I understand it'd just be him being the backup quarterback, but, I mean, you actually need a decent quarterback to be the backup. You're better off with Matt Moore back again than Brock Osweiler, all right? But either way, I wouldn't be surprised if Lamar Jackson ends up with a team like Miami. They've already had meetings. We've already met with him. He likes them. They like him, all right? And like I said, Miami needs a backup quarterback. They don't get Mayfield at number 11 or Rosen or trade up. Then I say, yeah, take a Lamar Jackson in the second round. Have him develop behind Tannehill for a couple years. And when it's Tannehill's done, unless Tannehill goes out and makes the playoffs year after year, he's probably going to be out in a couple of years. So I say develop Lamar Jackson for a couple of years, throw him into that offense, have him learn under Adam Gase, and be ready to go. Like I said, yeah, it's probably going to go Darnold at number one to the Browns, Rosen to the three at Jet, to the Jets, and then Mayfield, or not Mayfield, uh, Allen to number five to the Broncos at number five. And then you got Mayfield ending up with the Ending up with the Bills or the Dolphins, I feel. 
So it's going to be interesting to see. All right, and the Cardinals still need a quarterback too. I mean, you got Sam Bradford and Mike Glennon, but I'm not sure if Sam Bradford is the guy that's going to be there long term. And Mike Glennon, I mean, that's just the backup. So, I mean, you better off still drafting a quarterback. Either way. All right, so let's see what else we got going on as far as the rookies go. I mean, you got guys like Quentin Nelson, Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith in Miami. Miami would be nice if they don't get Mayfield at 11. Tremaine Edmonds, who's going to go first? Herman Smith. And I guess Tremaine Edmonds, that's a guy that's been building up his value somehow, some way. And we've only had the combine really since uh, since this college football season ended. And I guess pro day. I don't even know if he's had his pro day yet. But either way, I mean, you guys see where Denzel Ward's going to go with Josh Jackson. Like I said, Quentin Nelson, is he going to end up in Chicago? Saquon Barkley, that's the guy. Where is he going to end up? Okay, so we got, like I said, I got the Browns taking, um, I think he's, yeah, so I got the Browns taking um, Sam Darnold. I'm going to say the Giants take Bradley Chubb. Third pick goes to the Jets with Rosen. Fourth pick is the Browns. All right, maybe the Bills trade up there. Or do the Browns still have the fourth pick? Yeah, they still have the fourth pick, I believe. Yeah, so the Browns get the fourth pick. Maybe that's where you get a guy like Barkley, or maybe they trade that back for the Bills. Okay, so let's say let's say the Bills trade up for the fourth. Okay, I say Baker Mayfield's off the board there. Then you got Josh Allen going number five. Number six is where I think you see Saquon Barkley go. I think he's going to the Colts. All right, the Colts. If they end up with Saquon Barkley at number six, then they pulled off quite the heist against the Jets. You got a whole bunch of picks, and you probably got the guy you wanted. And all you had to do was move back a few more spots for some draft picks. All right, if the Colts do that, first great front office move they've made since uh, since a while. All right, Colts have always been a bad front office, never really done too well, never really put a solid team around Peyton Manning. It was always Peyton Manning making the guys around him play well. All right, and that's the truth and only the truth. So, yeah, if the Colts do that, I mean, it's going to be a nice little front office move by them. The Colts are really excited to see how they do this year. All right, if Andrew looks back by week one and they get Saquon Barkley, it's going to be a dangerous offensive team. Defense, you still got to fix up. But either way, I like what they've been doing. So that's going to wrap it up for this segment. Next up, we're going to talk about my favorite trades so far this offseason. We're going to talk a bit about them going depth as we do on this podcast. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit GSMC. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. So far today, we've talked about the Giants. Jason Pierre-Paul going to the Bucks. We talked about that for the first segment. Second segment, we basically talked about, I mean, we talked about quarterbacks, basically, like the rookie quarterbacks, talked about Sam Darnold a lot, talked about uh, Josh Rosen, decided, like, made my picks as to where, which quarterbacks are going where. Like, we even got in a... Uh, Matt Leinard into that segment. So it was a fun segment right there. It was pretty, uh, that's one of the off-season segments right there, you know? Off-season, not too much going on. So we make it entertaining still. But either way, one player we didn't talk about in that last segment was Johnny Manziel, all right? Showed up at the University of San Diego Pro Day. There was NFL scouts there. Turns out Johnny Manziel looked pretty good. Only had two misses, all right? And I guess I can't remember who tweeted out, but someone said that pretty much the consensus on what NFL scouts was he looked very strong. That's what Johnny Manziel needs, all right? He needs scouts to go out and look at him. I think that Johnny Manziel is going to get another chance. I hope he is because Johnny Manziel is one of the most exciting quarterbacks I've ever seen in college football, all right? Even more so a little... Uh, I don't want to say... Yeah, uh. Was he more exciting than Reggie Bush, honestly? I have no clue, all right? I just got done saying that Reggie Bush and Matt Lionel, those teams were exciting, but Johnny Manziel was just like must-see TV. It didn't matter who he's playing. You had to change the channel. Had to watch Matt, um, Reggie Bush, or not Reggie Bush, but uh, Johnny Manziel. You got to do the same with those USC teams. So I don't know. Maybe they're about even. Who knows? But either way, Johnny Manziel, 
had his little pro day yesterday with the University of San Diego. Looked good, so maybe he'll end up with the team. All right, obviously, you can't get drafted because you can't already got drafted, but I don't know. He looked good. Either way, now we're going to be talking about my favorite trades of the off season so far because it's the off season. So let's get into it. First up, how about the very first trade I felt we had? Alex Smith going to the Washington Redskins. Okay, let's see. I'm on the um, I, I'm the captain of the Eli Manning is the first ballot Hall of Famer ship. I'm the captain of the Dwight Howard is the first ballot Hall of Famer ship in the NBA, and I'm a captain of the Alex Smith is a very good. Not a very good, but Alex Smith is a good quarterback in the NFL ship, okay? Alex Smith, dare I say it, might be better or is on the same level as a Kirk Cousins, all right? Alex Smith absolutely went off yesterday or last year, all right, with the, with the Chiefs. Played extremely well, all right? Threw for nearly 4,000 yards, I think it was, out a whole bunch of touchdowns, not too many interceptions. Played extremely well, all right? And one thing with Alex Smith, why do we not like Alex Smith so much? What is the big deal with Alex Smith? All right. Why? Do we still think that he's like the same 49ers player Alex Smith? Is that what we're thinking here? Because let's but not forget that year that Colin Kaepernick to the, took the 49ers to the Super Bowl. All right. Alex Smith was already on pace to do that. Alex Smith doesn't get a concussion. I still think the 49ers make it to the Super Bowl. Let's not forget the year before I think it was where I think it was Kyle Williams. All right. He had the fumble against the Giants, I think it was. I'm going to double check that. I'm almost positive. I think Alex Smith was the quarterback that year. All right. Yeah, let's look at Alex Smith's stats throughout the years. We're going to do that. This might become an Alex Smith segment. So yeah, last year he threw for over 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, only five interceptions. If that's not a good quarterback, a very good quarterback, I don't know what is. So let's see. Yeah. we San Francisco, I think it was what? 2000? Let me see his playoff numbers, actually. Yes. 2011, he made the playoffs. Oh, it was 2011. All right. One and one. 495 yards, five touchdowns, no picks. Didn't make the playoffs again till 2013 with Kansas City. He made the playoffs, I think. How many years was he with Kansas City? From 2013, 2017. What, two, three, four, five. Five years. Made the playoffs four years with Kansas City. All right. That's. Pretty good, if I say so. I think, right? A good quarterback does get you to the playoffs that many times. All right, it's not like, oh, well, he had good players with the Chiefs. You put any of like, you think like, that's not how it works. You still need a good quarterback to make the playoffs. All right? And people would be like, oh, Blake Portals. That's one of the outliers there. Okay, leave me alone. But anyway, yeah, Alex Smith, I mean, he's had a good career so far. I think his last year was with 2012 with San Francisco when they did make the Super Bowl. He only played 10 games, had uh, nine of them started. He went 6 2 and 1. All right, 13 and 3 in 2011. I mean, other than that, before that, it was pretty bad. I mean, 2005, his QB record was 2 and 5 and 7 starts. 7 and 9 in 2006. 7 starts in 2007, went 2 and 5. 2009, only made 5 starts, went 5 and 5. 2010, 10 starts, 3 and 7. And then 2011, when they finally had a good team. All right. San Francisco was a dumpster fire before they got John Harbaugh and almost became another dumpster fire, but they're lucky John Lynch saved that franchise. All right, but either way, I forgot. We're talking about trades. We got to get back into it. All right, so we're talking trades. I like the trade for, um, I like the trade that the key or not the um, that the Redskins made for Alex Smith because of the fact that, like I said, Alex Smith. If you're comparing his year to Kirk Cousins' year, Alex Smith played a whole lot better than Cousins. All right, believe it or not, I think the Chiefs led the league in twenty plus yard um, gains and passes this season. All right, so Alex Smith does throw the ball downfield. Alex Smith is a very good quarterback, okay? And with the with the Redskins, if they don't succeed this season, it's not a matter of Alex Smith didn't play well. At least I don't think it will be. I think it'll be a matter of he just doesn't have really much to work with, all right? And people say, oh, Kirk Cousins didn't. Yeah, Kirk Cousins didn't do anything with the Washington Redskins at all, all right? So let's pump the brakes there. I know people were listening. That's the first time that came to your head. Kirk Cousins didn't do nothing with Washington. He put up nice stats, but didn't get him to the playoffs at all. All right, so there's that. But like I said, I like the thing because I like the, I like the um, the trade because of the fact they gave him a long term deal, like four years, like ninety four million, seventy four of it's guaranteed or something like that. I can't remember. It was a four year seventy four. Either way, he got a nice little contract, got a nice little pay, pay raise. All right. 
So you have your quarterback for the future. Now this allows you to do other things. All right. As like the biggest part of a rebuild is getting your quarterback. And now the Redskins pretty much, they just got to be smart in the front office. That's it. Just be smart, please. That's it. All right. Go get a running back. Go get some receivers. Okay. Get a tight end who can stay healthy for more than a couple of minutes. All right. Vernon Davis could stay. Vernon Davis is cool. Vernon Davis played well last season with Kirk Cousins. All right. Vernon Davis is in the old Vernon Davis. It just really hasn't been the old Vernon Davis since he left left San Francisco. That's one of the sadder, not sadder stories, just because I think it's just a matter of his, he got older. But Vernon Davis was very good with the 49ers. All right. And the defense, I think the defense, the defense, I'm not really too sure about Washington's defense. I haven't paid enough attention to Washington's defense. But if anything, you can get, you can always get better on defense. So if anything, fix up the defense too. But yeah, right now, I mean, as far as Washington goes, you have the ability to go out and get best players available and stuff like that because you already have your quarterback. That's already done. So I think Washington, I don't think they're going to be one in the division or make a playoffs, but I think they're going to be a team that's in the mix. All right. There's going to be a lot of teams in the mix this year for the NFC. It's going to be a very good conference, but yeah, I really like Alex Smith. I think I don't think he gets his fair share, like his fair credit. All right. He deserves a whole lot more praise than he does get. And, um, I don't know. That's just my feelings about it. All right. So let's see. What other trades that I like? I like what the Rams did. All right. I like getting a keep to leave and getting Marcus Peters. What did they give up for Marcus Peters? I have to double check that real quick. Let's see. What, what did they give up? They gave up. I think they had to give up a second round pick and a fourth round pick. I, gave, I think they gave up for Peters. All right. And getting those two guys pretty much what that means is we're preparing for Jimmy Garoppolo. All right. You already got what Russell Wilson there, but now you have another good quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo. That's what the Rams are preparing for. All right. And this, this also helps them because one thing I hear with players too when they're talking as far as what it takes to win a Super Bowl they always point you got to win the division first and foremost all right that's one of the most important things I think to teams is to win the division you win the division you're set all right and bringing in guys like a keep to lead Marcus Peters that's going to help combat Jimmy Garoppolo that's going to help combat Russell Wilson that's going to help combat uh, Sam Bradford shouldn't even be throwing Sam Bradford in the same sense as those two quarterbacks but either way those are big moves right there all right those are Super Bowl contending moves those are moves where you know what? We need a few more pieces. We'll be ready. So I think they brought back LaMarcus Joyner, I think it was. And that secondary is going to be disgusting. All right. Got rid of Alec Ogletree, but they're still in the running for Indomitian and Sue. All right. Imagine. Just close your eyes. Not if you're driving. Think. All right. If you're driving, just think. If you had a red light, maybe close your eyes for a couple of seconds before the light turns green. All right. But either way, think about it. Aaron Donald and Indomitian and Sue on the defensive line. The best defensive tackle with the second best defensive tackle. I'm not going to tell you who I think is the best, but those are the top two defensive tackles in the league. If you didn't know, if you disagree, that's cool. You're wrong, but it is what it is. All right. Let's see. So yeah, you got those two. I mean, that defense, if they get sued, that defense is going to be all time great. I think the only problem, the only thing that could keep it from becoming all time and all time great defense is egos and personalities. All right. I think Marcus Peters is a guy you really like that whole thing with Marcus Peters. I don't think that's a guy you got to worry about. Marcus Peters isn't an outspoken guy. Is he doesn't seem like a me guy at all. All right. Marcus Peters. Yeah, he does talk. Yeah, he does say some bad words. All right. Sound like a child saying bad words. But anyway, yeah, he does. A bit colorful when he's talking, giving an interview, but he's not a me guy. I don't feel. I feel like he's a guy who shows up to work and he's not going to apologize for talking the way he talks or whatever. I have no problem with it. I think it's fine. All right. But the whole thing with Marcus Peters, I mean, pretty much questioning his reputation and stuff like that as far as a locker room guy. I feel like that's a little bit overblown there. I don't think Marcus Peters is one you really got to worry about. Akeem Tlaib, Akeem Tlaib, if anything, is the guy you got to worry about. I don't even think there's nothing to worry about there. All right. I think Akeem Tlaib is a guy who pretty much just wants to play well and be on a good team. All right. I mean... Players are starting to become more outspoken. I guess that's something that's new to the NFL. But, I mean, now it's just a matter of fit. Getting everyone in there. All right? Dominic and Sue, like, people were saying, like, Dominic and Sue, that's one thing. That's, good. that's another guy you got to deal with. And Dominic and Sue has no ego. Dominic and Sue just wants to get paid. That's it. Dominic, Dominic and Sue is a businessman. All right? And Dominic and Sue goes out, does his thing on the defensive line, and he wants to get paid for it very greatly for it. All right? And he will. But uh, yeah, that defense is going to be all time great if they just pretty much mesh together really well. Because that's going to be a lot of three new pieces. Everyone else has been there for a while, so I think it'll be pretty easy to get um, get it going. Then we got pretty much the day the Cleveland Browns hit the offseason on fire when they made all those trades. All right, 
You got Tyrod Taylor. Well, um, they got Jarvis Landry. And they're like, oh, let's get Tyrod Taylor. They're like, oh, let's get Demarius Randall. And then they traded away Deshaun Kaiser and Danny Shelton. All right, cost them. Um, cost of it was a few mid round picks, but it was worth it. All right. The Browns were that was probably the best day in Browns. Like the that was probably the best day for Browns fans in like the last decade. All right. And they didn't even play a game that day. You go out, you get Jarvis Landry. Think about it. They're going to have Josh Gordon, Corey Coleman, Jarvis Landry, David Njoku. I could I could play quarterback for that team and succeed. Instead, they're like, oh, we had Deshaun Kaiser. We don't really like Deshaun Kaiser. They didn't, too. And one thing with Deshaun Kaiser, his biggest problem was that they threw him out there way too early. He wasn't ready. All right, he, He's a guy that needs to develop. And... um. Yeah, he's the guy that needs to develop. And I think him going to the Packers is going to be a nice little move for him. You're going to sit behind Aaron Rodgers for about five, six years, be the backup quarterback. I'm sure he could bring up, um, beat out Brett Hundley for that backup quarterback spot. Brett Hundley, such a nice guy. Played well with UCLA. Uh, doesn't have what it takes in the NFL. All right, he, Brett Hundley's a backup quarterback, but he's a backup quarterback for like a Tom Brady. All right. But anyway, Deshaun Kaiser, he sits behind Aaron Rodgers for a few years. He could very well become a good quarterback once Rodgers retires. If Kaiser's still around with the Packers at that time. All right. But either way, getting back to it, they bring in Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor's a good quarterback. He took the Bills to the playoffs. He was throwing at guys like Zay Jones and Kelvin Benjamin. All right. LaShawn McCoy was his leading receiver half the time. You give a guy weapons like this, he's going to succeed. Tyrod Taylor's going to surprise a lot of people when he shouldn't. All right. No one should be surprised by the kind of year Tyrod Taylor is about to have. All right. Tyrod Taylor is a good quarterback. There's no doubt about it. And then they bring in Demarius Randall. That's gonna that's a starting cornerback right there, or starting safety wherever they want to line him up at. I'm kind of curious to see what they do with Jabil Peppers because they have that dude lighting like 30 yards deep. I feel sometimes. But either way, I like what the Browns did there. All right, they made a lot of good moves. They made a lot of smart moves. Okay, the Browns have always made moves, but they haven't really been smart moves. So that's the biggest difference right here. They're making smart moves and they're just pretty much doing everything well here. All right, but those are probably like the three biggest trades. I mean, I guess in the trades, like Ty- Tyrod Taylor, Jarvis Landry, Demarius Randall, those are all three separate trades, but you get what I'm getting at here. All right, I like those trades that they made. I like Miami going out to get Robert Quinn. All right, Robert Quinn's a guy where kind of struggled the last couple of years, but wasn't in the right scheme. Had eight and a half sacks last, um, last year as an outside linebacker when in reality he's just the defensive end, so he's going to fit with Miami there. But uh, let's see, any other trades that I missed out that I really liked? I think that's pretty much it right there. All right, so it's going to wrap it up for this segment. Next up, we're going to be talking about whatever comes to mind as far as football goes. All right, so stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Alright, and welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. So far today, we've talked about the Giants and Buccaneers. Jason Pierre-Paul being traded over there to the Tampa Bay for a third and fourth round pick. Second segment, we talked about the rookie quarterbacks. Talked about Sam Darnold and his pro, bay, pro day. Talked about Josh Rosen a bit, where I think these quarterbacks are going to end up. Third segment, talked about my favorite trades of the offseason so far. And the first fourth segment, as we always do, we're going to talk about whatever else is going on in the world of football. So let's talk about whatever else is going on. All right, Miami Dolphins signed Frank Gore to a one-year deal. Frank Gore lasting long in the NFL, all right? And, I mean, he's going to be the backup of Miami. Kenyon Drake's going to be the starter, but I like that move for Miami right there. Frank Gore has been a guy who's been around for about 13 years, 14 years, something like that. Dude's been, I mean, last year with the Colts, I mean, they had a garbage offensive line, nearly had 1,000 yards, and finished with like 964 yards. 
Frank Gore, me and Tate have been having this conversation for weeks. All right. Is Frank Gore a Hall of Famer? Yes, he is. He has to be. Frank Gore has to be a Hall of Famer. All right. He has to be. I'm not saying he's a first ballot. I'm not saying he's second ballot. I'm not saying he's third ballot, but he has to get in. The dude finished fifth all time in rushing yards, 12th all time in all purpose yards. And yeah, he didn't have the Hall of Fame moments or anything like that, but we can't hold it, hold that back to him. Let's, I'll, I'll, I need to figure out who Frank Gore's quarterbacks were while he was in San Francisco. Turns out it was my boy Alex Smith. All right. Alex Smith played with him, but let's not forget Alex Smith did not become a good quarterback until John Harbaugh got there. And that was only for one season. Then Alex Smith gets benched. All right. 2012. Kaepernick takes over. They go to the Super Bowl 2013, 2014. Those are the last two years of Frank's career. 49ers really don't do much because the front office pretty much burned that organization to the ground. All right. Before that, when he first got drafted, he played with Tim Rattay, Ken Dorsey. 2005, played with Smith, Rattay, Dorsey, Cody Pickett, guys who started. All right. 2007, played with Dilfer, Sean Hill, Winky, Smith, only started seven games that year. 2008, Sean Hill started eight games. JT O'Sullivan started eight. I mean, 2009. Alex Smith started 10. Sean Hill started 6. Alex Smith started 10. Troy Smith started 6 games there. And that's where Alex Smith finally got good. And then Kaepernick took over the year after. All right. Frank Gore, again, deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. There's no doubt about it. Okay? There's no doubt. Again, not a first ballot, not a second ballot, but he deserves to get in. You can't have a guy finish 5th all-time in rushing yards, 12th all-time in all-purpose yards, and not put him in. That's just, it's, that's not right. It's not. All right? And again, I know he's not like the biggest name or anything like that, but he's put up a Hall of Fame career. All right. One of the, ooh, ooh, not one of the best running backs of all time, but one of the most consistent running backs of all time, I guess you could say. All right. So that's that. Pretty excited about that. This is probably going to be Frank Gore's last year from Miami. All right. He's always wanted to play for the one. Of the, he's, Miami, I think, tried signing him one year, but he ended up, last year he went and got, ended up signing with the Colts. But yeah, Frank Gore's always tried to make his way back here. And here he is. Probably, like I said, probably going to be his last year. Hopefully he does well with Miami, right? Miami's been kind of, I don't know, kind of curious to see what they got going on. Like the whole culture change, I think that's a real thing. I think Miami, as far as building new culture and all that, is completely real because you get rid of Jarvis Landry, Jay Ajayi. Jarvis Landry is a bit of a hothead, all right? Jay Ajayi, I mean, there was always problems with Jay Ajayi from the start, all right? I remember when um, Arian Foster was named the starter last season. Jay Ajayi didn't like it, and I think, I can't remember what happened, but whatever he did caused him to miss week one. That year, I think it was, and didn't show um, fly with the team or anything like that. But uh, yeah, JJ and Adam Gase never really seemed to get along. All right, I don't think JJ was really much of a fit there. Jarvis Landry, I mean, I guess Miami just figures that he overvalued himself. Dominic and Sue, that's getting rid of his contract. But I mean, you're bringing in guys like Frank Gore, Danny Amendola, Albert Wilson, like guys like that. Guys who really don't talk too much. Guys who pretty much just go on to do their jobs. I guess the culture change is real there. But either way, Frank Gore is now a Miami Dolphin. All right. And I like that move from Miami, like I said, bringing a veteran back there. Someone uh, pretty much, because Kenyon, Kenyon Drake has had a fumbling problem, but I mean, yeah, if Kenyon Drake's not playing well, you throw Frank Gore out there. I'm very excited for Frank Gore, too. Frank Gore has become, in the last few weeks, one of my favorite players of all time, just because of the fact that I've been defending him so hard as far as making the Hall of Fame. All right, so there's that. Let's see what else we got going on in the NFL right now, or anything, college football, anything going on. I mean, it's been pretty slow so far. I mean, there's no news really going on in college football. Um, let's see what else we got going on here. Let's see. We got, you know what? Let's talk about the fact that the NFL is going to be very, very balanced this year. I've been talking about it for the last few weeks. It's kind of been the theme of everything, but I mean, going into the NFL, there's not really too many bad teams. Okay. The NFC, I don't think really has one bad team in that conference. I mean, there's some that aren't as like, aren't very good, but I don't think there's like one bad team there. All right. Cause like the Bears and Redskins, I guess you could say, would be like the worst teams in the NFC, but I think they're going to be pretty decent teams. And the AFC, that's a bit of a different story. All right, the AFC East, you got the Buffalo Bills, who I think could be a bit of a bad team there, depending on the quarterback that they get, and depending on if this quarterback is good from the start, unless AJ McCarron plays well. Miami, I think they're going to be a middle of the pack, going to be a team that could possibly fight for a wild card spot if Tannehill comes out and plays the way he did before he tore his ACL. That's a team that could compete for a wild card there. New England, obviously, they own that division and the conference. The Jets, I mean, they got a, f a bit more work to do there. AFC North, I think the Cleveland Browns are the second best team in that division, so that's pretty much all you need to know there. The South, all four of those teams are very good teams, I feel. And the AFC West is a pretty much a matter of wait and see. Chargers are a good team. Broncos, I think, are going to be a good team. The Chiefs can be a very good team if Mahomes comes out and plays extremely well. And then the Raiders, that's one team that's kind of scared me. 
Right, the Raiders kind of scared me with what they've done because I feel like John Gruden is more so really going with this whole we got to throw it back, we got to become an old school type team. I just, I don't, I still don't like the fact that they got rid of Michael Crabtree for Jordy Nelson. I mean, figure something else out. All right, if you don't want Michael Crabtree, trade back and draft a receiver or something. Don't bring in a worse receiver. Jordy Nelson is not going to make you better at all. All right, bringing in Doug Martin does not make you better. Okay, I mean, it's just kind of. Scary to see because the Raiders only have really their stadium's going to be ready in 2020, so they got this season and the 2019 season, I think, before they head out to Vegas. And I really want to see this team do well for these Oakland fans for the last two years. I got a bunch of Oakland Raider fans, and I know they're pretty not happy about it. Uh, the Raiders going to Vegas, but I really hope this, Va- this Raiders team does something in these two years, all right, instead of pretty much just wasting it away and giving John Gruden a 10 year deal. I mean, do we think that, like, giving a coach like that a 10 year deal? I think I was watching, uh, it was. Undisputed, I think it is, with Shannon Sharp and uh, Skip Bayless. Rod Woodson was on there talking. Like, he was talking. He's pretty, basically saying the same stuff I was saying the other day. All right. Jordy Nelson doesn't make you better. Doug Martin doesn't make you better. And given a coach like John Gruden, 10 years, $100 million, I mean, he's, Rod Woodson basically said that, you know, Gruden won the Super Bowl with Tony Dungy's players. But I get, I get that whole argument. But the Raiders did make the Super Bowl with John Gruden's players. So, I mean, you got to think that John Gruden would have made the Super Bowl with either team. All right. So you had that, but like he said, like John Gruden, like his winning percentage is like fifty, like one fifty three percent of his games. Didn't really do much with the Bucks after that Super Bowl. I mean, that's it. Like John Gruden made like elevated his value just by working for ESPN, and that's crazy how it is. All right, me and Tate talk about all the time. If Frank Gore were to work for ESPN after he retired, he'd be for sure he'd be a Hall of Famer. That would help him even more. But like I said, I mean John Gruden, that whole like working for ESPN, being like the color commentary guy there. I mean, I don't know how, but that made everyone like think of him as an even better coach than what he was. All right, and maybe Gruden could fix things up there, but it's just a matter of I really hope he's not going too far with this whole making old school football thing back with the Raiders. All right, that's one thing that kind of scares me with the team, but uh, that's all I got to say about that. As for all the other teams, I mean, the AFC South for me right now is the best division in the AFC. I mean, you get the Texans, who are a very good team, are a playoff team with Deshaun Watson. I feel Deshaun Watson last year, when he, before he blew around, blew his knee out, was a top ten quarterback. The Colts are as good as any team in the NFL. When you got Andrew Luck out there, especially if they had Saquon Barkley, Jacksonville Jaguars barely lost to the Patriots in the AFC Championship game, and the Tennessee Titans have gotten better. If they get in Dominic and Sue, they're going to be even better. So that's um, AFC South division is going to be very good this season. But uh, that's pretty much all that's going on right now in the NFL. Been kind of slow. Once Indomitian and Sue signs somewhere, that's going to be even bigger news. So that's going to wrap it up for today's show. Today, what did we talk about? We talked about um, we talked about the Colts trading, or not the Colts, the Giants trading away Jason Pierre-Paul to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bucks are giving back to the um, Giants a third-round pick and a fourth-round pick. All right, good move for the Buccaneers, good move for the Giants here. You can go out and draft Bradley Chubb for cheaper, or, I mean, you could draft a quarterback, which I think they should do. Then for the second uh, second segment, we talked about Sam Darnold sign, er, in his pro day, throwing in the rain, looked good, threw his receivers open, led receivers, looked pretty good in the rain. All right, talked about all the other quarterbacks. Let's see, third segment, we talked about my favorite trades. I like what the Browns did, I like what the Rams did, and I like what the... Um, the Washington Redskins did. And then for this fourth segment, we talked about Frank Gore and pretty much anything else that was crossing my mind as far as the NFL went. So thanks for listening to the GSMC football podcast. As always, I am your host, Jesse Tapia. All right, we'll be back next Tuesday. So stay tuned and we'll talk to you later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program